I made a mistake. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we've got an article about uh, common mistakes that home buyers make in a hot seller's market, and uh, it's kind of a reaction video for me. It's kind of something that uh, that I, I I love reading these. I love reading this because, as a uh, real estate agent, you get jaded. You get to the point where you you can't get in the shoes of your buyers or sellers anymore, because you've been through it so many times. It's it's not new for you. So I like to read articles that uh, my home buyers and home sellers might actually be reading online because it gives me an idea what what the thinking is before I even meet them. Um, so let's get to it right away. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Schenk, and I'm the founder and managing broker of Deer Realty here in St. Louis, Missouri. We're a small brokerage, boutique, I like to say. Uh, we handle mostly uh, buyers and sellers of residential homes, and we do some light commercial sales as well and listings. Uh, but this is the Dear Old Realty and Friends podcast. Uh, it's available on YouTube. If you like content related to real estate stuff, like bad real estate agents, good real estate agents, uh, neighbor disputes, uh, landlord tenant disputes, these types of things, then you should click the subscribe button uh, and maybe check out our channel. Maybe check us out on um, Apple Podcasts. This type of thing but I'll leave you to do that because uh, I know you're a pretty bright audience so that being said let's get to the article and uh, the headline the biggest home buyers the biggest mistakes home buyers make in a seller's market the housing market is hot but don't let that cause you to make a dumb mistake now I don't think I don't like to say dumb mistakes I think maybe unforced error um, that would be more what I'd, what I'd go for. But, you know, you have, to, you have to have a good headline. So the first thing, trying to get a deal. I agree with this. I think that, uh, that when, you, when you try to lowball a seller in the hottest market in history, uh, and, the, and, you know, the house has been on the market for less than a week, uh, do you really think that the seller is going to take your offer? I mean... Especially if your agent says, hey, we already know there's four offers in on the property or 30 offers on the, on the property. Are you really going to come in at $10,000 below asking, $20,000 below asking and think you're going to get the house? You're not going to get the house. You're not going to get a deal. And it's a bad market for a deal. Um, the best you can hope for right now is be at asking. Okay. Unless a house is just terrible and been on the market for a couple months, then by, by all means, make, you know, make an offer and see what they say. You can't be hurt by that. Um, the number two, uh, the number two thing that sell, uh, buyers may do is uh, insisting on an inspections contingency or dragging out the inspections contingency period. And I think that this can also be true. It's right here. Um, however, I still recommend that all buyers get a home inspection or at least have the contingency in the offer, uh, regardless of the market. Uh, in our particular uh, real estate market. I'm not familiar with dragging out the uh, contingency for inspections. In our normal contract, we have 10 days to uh, 10 days to do inspections, and then 10 days to come to an agreement. And there's nothing that says that you can't do an inspection on the on the second day of the accepted offer, and then uh, you know make your recommendations or ask for certain things on the fourth day, and then the seller can agree and you can move on down the road. There's nothing that says you can't do that. Some agents will. Uh, will prolong the deal for a variety of reasons. Let me tell you a few reasons why. One, if you're the seller's agent, you may uh, drag out the deal because you want the buyers to be in it and you want them to have to be making decisions the entire time. Uh, and you may say, well, that's cruel. But let me, let me explain it. So let's say, the, say a buyer wants to buy a house and you got a 30-day close. You're all the way to day 20 by the time you've made an agreement, if you drag it out. Okay. So now this, now this buyer, if things don't go well, you know, if, if, if you, if they back out or if, if, if something doesn't go right, or if you don't accept the, uh, the inspections, you know, 
you've been you've been moving stuff out of the house most likely they've been telling all their friends and family that they bought a house and they're moving in in 10 days and so it's a total disaster so one way to you know to keep everybody in the deal is to drag out the the inspection contingency i don't do that i don't do it because if i'm working with the seller um I don't think in a, in a hot market, I don't think it benefits me to drag it out. And when I work as a buyer, I would just like to get the inspection contingency out of the way so that we can move on to the closing. And I, and I, and I tell my buyers that when we do make an offer, we do actually want the property at the end of the day. So that doesn't mean we should accept the property if there's something wrong with it that's you know terrible that we didn't see when we walked through it or hasn't been disclosed. But what that means is we want to make, we're making an offer, uh, we're, we're putting forth an offer on our best possible terms. We actually do want the house. We're being honest with the sellers. So that's what I think. Uh, other agents may think differently. And, you know, a side note to that is what you ask your potential real estate agent is probably the wrong thing when you're looking for the right agents. And, and what I mean by that is when you talk to three other buyers agents, have you asked them any of those questions? Or did you ask them some generic question like, you know, when can I call you on the phone? Or what time can I call you on the phone? Do you think any agent's gonna say, well, you can never call me? They're all gonna say, call me anytime, okay? So you've asked a question and then you didn't get anything on the end. Asking for a philosophy or asking for a strategy is a great way to get some insight into how that agent's, you know, working. Uh, if they don't have an answer, to the question, uh, one, it's not in any of the scripts that they've memorized. So you know you probably don't want to work with that person because they're memorizing scripts and they can't come up with answers on their own. Uh, two, if you, if you fundamentally disagree with the strategy, you probably shouldn't go with that person. But that's just on a side note. You can do whatever you'd like. Uh, I just, I know I get interviewed and what's funny is I'll get the same questions that are on the, that are on the internet, you know, and they'll be the exact same in the exact same order. And it's like, this isn't hard. This is, I mean, I know it's coming. Anyway, I would prefer somebody ask me about my strategy or why I do certain things, but maybe, maybe you don't want that and that's okay too. So the next one, failing to work with a realtor. Uh, I don't particularly have an, I, I don't particularly have an opinion because I'm biased. I mean, I am a real estate agent. I don't think I can give you a score answer. Now, uh, I have seen people buy houses with agents all the time and they get burned. But I've also seen a few people buy a house without an agent and they get great deals because the seller refuses to work with real estate agents in general. So uh, do I think people should buy a house without an agent? No. Uh, will people still do it? Yes. And I think that leads to something has to be said about the quality of your agent. Um, some agents don't add anything to the transaction and uh, other agents are the best decision that you've ever made. Choosing that agent is the best decision you could uh, 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 have made. So I don't agree necessarily with failing to work with a realtor as far as making a home buyer mistake. Okay. I think you should, especially a first time home buyer. I think that's definitely something you should do, but I can, I've seen it work out for, for people when they don't have an agent. And then one way I could see it working out for a buyer and seller is if neither has any clue as to what they're doing. Uh, it's the blind leading the blind at that point, and you know maybe they can work out something on their own. But for the most part, I do think you should work with a realtor on the buy side. Um, I have, like I said, I've I've seen I feel like way more deals that are terrible uh, without an agent than ones uh, with an agent across the board. But you know, you do you. The next one is not being prepared. And that is right here. And I agree with that. Uh, before I show my buyers any properties, I need to get a pre-approval or a proof of funds. And why is that? It's because I don't want to spend days of my life showing people houses they can never purchase. Um, is this selfish of me? I don't think so. It would be the same thing as you going to work for a week without pay. You still do the work, but you don't get paid for it. Uh, that's what it's like when you spend time as an agent with someone who doesn't have the funds to buy the house. So, uh, you know, you call me and you say, hey, John, I want to go buy a house. I say, okay, well, here's the name of a few lenders. 
why don't you get a pre-approval and get back to me and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll set up a search and we'll go from there. And then you don't do that. Well, it tells me a few things. One, it tells me you're not going to listen to me. So, you know, why are we wasting each other's time? Uh, two, why, why would you not get a pre-approval? Uh, you're going to have to show proof of funds or you're going to have to have a pre-approval with your offer. The first offer you write, you're going to have to have it to have any chance of getting the house in this market. Um, you're just putting off the inevitable. Uh, and, and I know that some buyers think that the sellers should just trust them. And uh, I'm just telling you they don't and they shouldn't. They trust the people who have pre-approval letters or proof of funds with their offer. That's what builds the trust. They don't know you from anybody else of the 20 people putting an offer on their property. Uh, they don't want to go through the, the trouble. Like, just give me the pre-approval, give me the proof of funds, and we can talk. And that's, that's how it is. It may not seem fair to you. It may not seem right, but that's just the way it is. Um, number five is being inflexible. Uh, and so, yes, I believe that that is true that will hinder your home purchase experience. And there are two times that this presents itself. So it prevents itself first in the offer. If you junk up an offer with uh, off the wall demands, you look like a buyer that the seller isn't gonna wanna work with. They're gonna reject you for someone who doesn't have a terrible offer like yours, okay? So let's just assume there's there's two offers and they're both for $100,000. Uh, I know it's hard to find a house for $100,000 anywhere. But one offer has you know, an inspection contingency and appraisal rider, and that's it. The other one has an inspection, inspection rider uh, a, a contingency. It has an appraisal rider. It says it wants 14 of your pieces of furniture uh, and, and include that in the deal. Uh, it says that it wants, on the inspections, it wants to drag it out to, you know, 25 days and, and also wants the ability to rescind the offer at any point in time. Okay, who's going to win? Well, the clean offer is going to win every single time. No one's going to put up with that. And so then another time it happens is after the accepted offer. And what I would say, and you probably don't want to hear this, is some things just happen during the home purchase experience. Sellers can forget a, get, uh, for di forget a date. Uh, buyers could miss a deadline. It happens. It stinks. However, if the seller did, did one thing wrong and is acknowledging they did something wrong, don't be inflexible. There may be a time during the course of the deal that you will need the seller's generosity and they will be much less, li less likely to give it to you at that time if you've been inflexible earlier. So you can put one over on the seller in the beginning, okay? You can send them an inspection report that's terrible, that has like 50 things on it and you want them all fixed, okay? You can do that, but the seller's going to remember that. And so if you miss your day, like if, if you, uh, some paperwork got screwed up and you missed loan commitment, that seller is going to be more than happy to say goodbye. I'll just pick someone else. They're not. They're they're not going to return the favor. So that's that's two ways in which being inflexible can really really hurt you in the home purchase experience. The sixth one is getting discouraged. And you know I somewhat agree with this. Um, it's kind of in two different ways. One, I find that buyer's fatigue is real. Uh, what buyers, what buyers fatigue is, buyers just get worn down in the home purchase search. They've written, you know, offer after offer above asking, and they haven't been accepted. Uh, they've had a deal fall through for some other reason that has nothing to do particularly with them, a bad experience. And they finally settle on a house, not because they want it, but because they've given up on the search. Uh, believe it or not, this is hard to understand as a, a buyer's agent because you take people to look at houses every day and you think, why would a buyer get tired of looking at homes? Well, it's not what they do. It's not what they do every day. Uh, no one really, I mean, as, a, as an agent, that's what you do. And, you know, you see, you know, hundreds and hundreds of houses a year. It's not, it's not new to you. It's not, not strange. But, you know, for a buyer who has to take off work to go see a house or for a buyer that has to take off their entire weekend looking at houses, they get tired. And then after they've gotten their hopes up and they've lost out on a couple of deals, they're discouraged. And so they actually just put an offer on anything at that point. They're just like, I just want a house. Maybe it's not the house they want, but they just do it. So that part of getting discouraged, the uh, buyer's fatigue, be very, very wary of that. Be careful of that. And then there's a side part of uh, getting discouraged, and that's the mental prisoning of wanting to buy a house, but then never setting appointments to see the housing stock in the area that you want to buy. So you've gone through the pre-approval process, you've gotten the pre-approval, you're ready to go look at houses, and then 
a new house comes up on the market on a Friday and you decide, well, you know what? I'm not going to go look for it. You know, I'm not going to go look at it until Tuesday or Wednesday of the following week. Well, the house is gone on a weekend. Okay. So why didn't you go look at the house? Uh, were you busy? And I get it. We're all busy. So you just lost out on that house. It, but you're also making it so that you can't get the house because you never went to go see it. So that's a, that's a real problem. Uh, you will never buy a house if you don't go look at them in the marketplace. Um, you've created discouragement by not following through on setting a, a timely appointment. And um, my policy as a buyer's agent is, you know, if you want to see something, I'll show, you know, I know what the commission is. We have an agreed to commission in our buyer's agency agreement. And, you know, I'll let you know what the commission is. We'll go look at it. I'll show you anything you want to. Uh, some other people, maybe, maybe some agents kind of steer people to not look at some things or not look at, it. I give you everything that I know about the house, my opinion, and we go look at it. But you can definitely get yourself discouraged if you, if you're in the home buying process for three months and you've looked at one house, I mean, you're not getting anywhere. You're not, you're not moving forward. So I do, I do somewhat agree with that. And so after the article, which is a nice article, uh, I, I think it was I think it was well written and fair. Um, I have my own uh, bonus things to add, and I'd like to do that uh, for you now. Uh, one of my bonus mistakes is thinking that the listing pictures are in any way relevant to the house that you will go see. So you're like, okay, I want to. You, I've had people say, I want to buy this house, okay, and they're ready to write an offer before ever, ever having gone and looked at the house, and then when they actually go see the house in person, they're like. Oh my God, this house is terrible. I would never buy this house. Uh, you know, pictures are, I mean, we're real estate agents. We know how to get good pictures. Most of us. Some people still mess around with iPhone pictures and that's just dumb. So anyway, a good listing agent's gonna, gonna, gonna put that house in the best possible light and you will be fooled. So that's one mistake. Now, another one is not factoring in all the additional fees to close and moving in. So for an, for, for an example, a home inspection costs about 400 bucks, between 400 and 600 bucks, just for the building inspection portion. You could add like 30 other things on there. So you could have a you know, multi-thousand dollar bill on inspections if you really, really wanted it. Um, that costs money. That costs you money as the buyer. Uh, association dues or HOA dues, condo fees, those kinds of things on the monthly uh, do add up on your payment. Uh, and so that can affect what you can afford especially compared to other homes in area. So let's say you're looking at a standalone villa and it's $400,000, okay? And it's got a $150 a month fee to cut the grass and whatnot. They say that. And then you've got another house, maybe even across the street, that's not in an HOA that doesn't have a monthly fee, but you have to cut the grass. Well, you know, that's a $140, $150 is significant. And those are, those are on the low end. You can get it in the two and $300 range around here. Uh, and that can really affect, you know, what you can afford. Uh, and, and you need to make that, that, that understanding early. Uh, if you have the two properties and you are looking for some sort of value, you do need to factor in those condo fees and additional fees. Another mistake is not taking time to make good decisions, okay? It's one thing to find a house that you actually want to buy. It's an entirely another to actually get that house. You should be familiar with an area before you make an offer. That means you've physically viewed other properties in the area and you know what is sold and for what price. So I always get uncomfortable when somebody like in St. Louis, let's say they want to buy a house in Webster, but they're not from Webster. They've never been in Webster. They just say they want to buy a house there. And so then we go and look at one house in Webster. They write an offer and, and they decide they want to write an offer on that house. Well, how do they know how that house compares to any other houses in Webster? Same thing with, uh, I'd say same thing with Shrewsbury. There's certain, you know, certain parts of Shrewsbury and the Athens School District, certain parts of Shrewsbury and the Webster School District. Does that matter? It does seem to matter on the prices. Uh, things like that. If you don't look at a bunch of houses in an area, how are you going to be comfortable as a buyer uh, trusting your, your real estate agent to tell to tell you, you know, that this is a good offer? So I think that's, that is a, a mistake that someone makes. You need to take the time to go and look at a bunch of houses before you can make an educated and good offer. Uh, then there's some sidebars to that. Um, that would be actually, I screwed up. It's not a sidebar. It's another, it's another mistake. And that's not trusting what your agent says. And this cuts both ways. So your agent could be lying to you to get a sale in the books. It's entirely possible. These, and I have to believe that that happens because I'll see houses 
that are you know fifty and sixty thousand dollars over what somebody should pay and they're buying it okay so somebody told them that and they're clearly not looking at the comps or the comparable sales because there's no way you would spend that if you looked at the comparable sales so that's one that's one and then number two uh, if your agent is lying to you there should be a way to, to tell and that's like looking at the comparable sales uh, and checking uh, how your desired home compares to the others for sale if your agent's playing games and not showing you the right comparable sales for the house then that's on you and you need to probably sever ties with that agent you don't need to be getting taken for a ride you should trust your agent if you are working with someone and you don't trust them then you shouldn't be working with them in the first place it's not going to get any better during the process so that's just that is a mistake that people make uh, they don't trust what their agent is saying even for something like if i say to someone look there's 13 other offers on this house okay we need to come in at a at over asking by far because one of these 13 people is going to make a stupid offer if you really really want the house we should put in an offer above that now i'll tell people you know i'll say the opposite i'll say look there's 13 other off offers on this house i feel like we can get better value at it in another house when all is said and done that's something you should pay attention to okay uh I've, I feel like I've lost clients in the past for telling them the truth versus what they want to hear. Uh, it, it burns to lose clients for that reason, okay? But I can sleep at night. And you should be working with agents that you feel comfortable with, that when you buy a house, you're not going to experience buyer's remorse. So that's all I have for today. It's a long one. I'm really sorry. 21 minutes. We've got to get out of here. I hope you've had a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed or learned something uh, uh, that can help you in your home search somewhere. And uh, I will catch you on the next one.